Jiang Chen was silent and thought about whether he still hated her or not. He also answered if he still hated her. But why did he help Xia? There was no particular reason why he helped her. Kisha fired him. He was almost forced to the streets, almost starved. In her head she was already casting the most poisonous curses, throwing the most vile insults at him. But that was all in the past. Even if she took revenge, what would she get? Did Xia think Jiang Chen would just stand by and laugh? But she still had guilt. It's just a job. Don't think lowly of her. If she hadn't lost her job and started drinking every day. He would never have gotten the interdimensional bracelet. Even blessings can disguise themselves to be more like curses than blessings. It must be said that fate is truly full of mysteries. After she fired him, he thought a lot about it. If it was based on that faca, she wasn't a worthy manager. His ability is certain but she just doesn't understand people's feelings. Hexia asked if Jiang Chen meant like psychology. Jiang Chen explained that it's not something that can be learned from books. When he said people's feelings, it was something that even if Xia studied it for a lifetime, no one could really interpret it. Jiang Chen then looked at the shoe rack where there were only women's shoes in her shoes. He remembered that Xia seemed to have a girlfriend. Xia also asked what Jiang Chen was looking at. Why are there none of his girlfriend's shoes? And Jiang Chen has been at his house for a long time until late at night. Will his girlfriend not be jealous? Xia was silent and did not speak. Although she didn't really understand about the details, her boyfriend probably broke up with her because of this crazy amount. Maybe it was her boyfriend who ensnared her in this. And maybe also because of her boyfriend, she had nowhere to go but to live in this broken apartment. Jiang Chen said that his girlfriend really didn't care. Xia also said that he was not her man. Then, why doesn't she go back to her parents' house? Anything would be better than this place. Xia didn't go back to her parents' house because she didn't want to bring trouble. Jiang Chen said that he really admired Xia. Xia asked Jiang Chen if he wanted to hear her story, and Jiang Chen said that he wanted to hear it. Although she seemed hesitant at first, Xia finally told her everything. Xia recounted everything she faced in a row after firing Jiang Chen. From a poorly managed store, and the company became increasingly blamed for his management skills. Woods in her job, her boyfriend betraying her, being harassed by the gang, the shame that came with having nowhere to go. Until finally, where she had to escape from her apartment, and moved here where she started working at a nearby flower shop. She wasn't looking for pity, she was just very tired. She needed someone to confide in, and this person just appeared in front of her. That's right, Shia should do that more often. The more she laughed, the better she looked. She had finished her story, then she asked Jiang Chen to tell her the story. Jiang Chen didn't really have much to tell, he just started a business and made a little money. But Chia didn't seem to believe him. Jiang Chen couldn't help if she believed him or not. But he believed Xia would be a great business manager. What does Xia think? Is she interested in joining Jiang Chen? Jiang Chen said that this was his original love scene. Continued to exchange trash for gold. That method is too unreliable. He would get caught one day, then he would have nowhere to run. The best solution is to start a company and find someone to manage it. I can still scavenge the future with trash. If she brings out VR games, existing games will be on the periphery. Why choose this woman? Decent, not a bad person, the most reliable person he knows. And after all, we were forged in the same place, right? Xia also asked what Zhang Chen meant by that. How many years of working at the flower shop would it take to pay him back? Xia is just unemployed now, didn't she just help him get a job? Xia also asked if Jiang Chen started this company. Jiang Chen said if he had a business, would Xia still not believe him? In a teasing tone, doesn't that mean she'll be his subordinate? Jiang Chen said that he was really looking forward to his supervisor working diligently under him. Although she thought about it for a long time, Xia finally accepted Jiang Chen's offer. Jiang Chen looked very happy. He immediately congratulated Xia. Xia has been recruited by Future Technology, and her salary starts from 20000 Xia was surprised because the salary she would receive was that big. But Xia explained that she didn't accept any hidden rules. Jiang Chen looks very happy with the word hidden rules, and Xia looked panicked at his behavior. Then Jiang Chen said that his company would not do such a thing. His company does not prohibit employees from becoming directors. Xia also wanted to know more about his company. Future technology, it sounds like, from the high-tech company sector. So his responsibilities would be either sales or research and development. If research and development 
Although she had no experience managing this field, she was confident that she could familiarize herself with the task within a month. Suddenly, Jiang Chen asked Xie to stop talking. Simply put, Xie was the CEO, and she had to take care of everything. The company is still in the conceptual stage. Isn't Xie excited? She will be the next Steve Jobs of China and Jiang Chen will be the Bill Gates of China. Xie doesn't seem to be listening to Jiang Chen, and instead she calls someone. It turns out he's calling the hospital. He said if Jiang Chen needed to take mental illness. Jiang Chen then took his cell phone and asked Xie to let him finish his speech first. If she didn't join him now, she would regret it in five years' time. It would be like how people ignored Jack Ma at first. Xie also asked for her cell phone back. Then he immediately snatched his cell phone from Zhang Chen. Zhang Chen continued that Xie's position was simply CEO, but since the company didn't have much business yet, she could take the position of general manager as well. At this stage, he would pay her 20,000 yuan every month. She didn't need Xie to pay her back directly. Let him explain his next task. He would give her 500,000 to help register the company. After that, his monthly salary will be higher than that small amount. Don't look at it like that because he is not joking. She didn't need to worry about the rest. In two months' time, they would be really busy. She just sighed hearing all of Jiang Chen's stories. She also said if Jiang Chen wouldn't be afraid if he took the money away. Jiang Chen said that Xia was not that kind of person. No matter what the value of the company is in the future, Spending 500 ribs on a person who really understands is not even considered a loss. Xia couldn't help but think, when did Jiang Chen think of it like that? If she didn't work for him, it would be Xia's loss. Jiang Chen thought this woman just hated him. He also asked to see what the future would be like. Because Xia doesn't have a job, and she also owes him a lot of money. He's looking forward to working with her from now on. Finally, Jiang Chen said goodbye because it was late at night. When Xia gets the chance, send her bank account number to Jiang Chen because he will be sending her salary in July. After that, he'll send the salary at the end of the month as usual. He also told Chia to find a better place to live immediately. It's not safe for a woman to live in a place like this, especially a beautiful woman. He would be gone for the next few days, Chia might not be able to contact him. Suddenly, Chia called him and thanked him for saving her that time, he was so cool. Then Zhang Chen wondered if this woman liked him. Forget it, it's better to stop dreaming. She's probably just expressing her gratitude. After Jiang Chen left, Xia was pensive. What was that just now? How could she say something so embarrassing? Senya, located at the southernmost tip of Hainan Island. Don't call it Deer Town. It is more or less known as the Hawaii of Asia. Among the top four holiday destinations of China, San Wei Hang Xia. The specialty of this whole island is the best of high bin scenery. Here there is no need to worry about air pollution or any PM 2.5. He can spread his arms wide to hug the blue sky and breathe in the smell of nature. This city had the best air quality in all of China, bar none. Jiang Chen was vacationing and relaxing in this city. See sand and bikinis. This place is a vacation paradise location. Sonia. Jiang Chen finally arrived here. A person's life is only a few short decades. One year past is another year past. He should travel following his heart's desire while still young. A week-long trip for a few hundred thousand, enough to pay for the down payment on the room. Back then, he never even dared to dream of this. But now, he could live like a king and enjoy traveling. The sooner he spent this money, the sooner he could return. Speaking of which, he was curious how Sun Zhou was doing. As she was on this trip, it would be better than spending it on her own. And Yo Yo did she take care of herself. Would she has money should she buy an island? Finally, Jiang Chen arrived at the Sheridan Hotel. After he paid, he asked the taxi driver to take the change. As expected of a famous five-star hotel, even the greeter was friendly. The waiter asked Jiang Chen to follow him. If he needed anything, he could use the terminal to call him. The maid said she hoped Jiang Chen's stay would be comfortable, and she hoped the Sheridan Hotel would become a part of her treasured memories. After that, the maid left the room, and Jiang seemed to be going somewhere. For the first time in his life, Jiang Chen was able to enjoy a big swimming pool like this. And this was one of the most viral swimming pools at the time, which was great. Jiang Chen seemed to really enjoy swimming in the pool. Jiang Chen swam to the edge of the pool. He saw women splashing around in the pool. He spent several hundred thousand for the next seven days. How should he spend them? Then Jiang Chen finished swimming and changed his clothes, and tried to relax on the pool deck. As expected, the standard was high. This was the best view terrace on the beach, and he wasn't bragging about it. 
There were many beautiful women playing on the beach, steady Southeast Asian women, blonde foreigners with sports glasses, and exotic Middle Eastern hotties. There are women surfing and playing beach volleyball, all very attractive. Beautiful women accompanied by beautiful wine. Talk about how a bottle from the year 82 is here. When trying to drink the wine, Jiang Chen didn't seem to like the taste. It was sour and had no kick. No wonder all the rich people in the movie all loved the coast and the sea. Then Jiang Chen fell into a deep sleep. When he woke up, he was hungry. Time to go out and find something good to eat. Maybe he'd have a little adventure. Jiang Chen got ready to go to dinner. The people there were amazed by Jiang Chen's good looks. It turns out he got a dinner invitation. He got an invitation from Crown Prince Naif of Saudi Arabia for a birthday celebration banquet. Jiang Chen ordered grilled ribs and looked very good. He immediately ate the grilled ribs with gusto. After he finished, he ordered other foods such as steak, pizza, sushi, and others. People looked at Jiang Chen and wondered how someone like him could get an invitation to such a high-class event. Eventually, he finished all this food. But it seemed like he wasn't full yet and would go see what else there was to eat. Jiang Chen also saw grilled meat and it looked delicious, so he went there to try it. Finally, the crown prince came. Today is his beautiful daughter's birthday. Thank you all for coming. His daughter also thanked everyone for coming to her birthday party. So that's the wife of the Arabian prince. They're very rich. It has nothing to do with her. She would continue to eat her food. But she heard some hot topics just now. It's not like she was eavesdropping. It was due to the effect of the genetic drug. There was a woman and a man talking. The woman asked if the man was free tonight. Of course, my lady, since he's already seen her, he doesn't have anything else to do tonight. There was someone asking Prince Naif a question. He wanted to know why Prince Naif preferred the mysterious region in the East to celebrate this precious time in his beloved daughter's life. Prince Naif said he liked this place. They celebrated in Hawaii last time, and there weren't many reporters to bother. Did he hear the news? Just last night, the rumored engaged actress spent the night at the nationally renowned King's Chamber residence. And one of the sexy women just now, he knows one who is famous for her innocence. She came to his party last night. Boss Mai had already ruined many women's sense of self over the past few years. Next time, if he threw a party like that, could she save one for him? Of course. Boss Mai asked how her waist was. Jiang Chen didn't seem to expect it. The rich were on a completely different playing field. He had already heard a lot of gossip about female artists. If reporters managed to sneak in, he couldn't even imagine what would happen, and of course it would never happen. Suddenly someone came over to Zhang Chen. The man said Koba 5 meat, that's good stuff. Zhang Chen said it wasn't bad. Such a small steak costs $300. But the way Zhang Chen ate it hurt the man. The man introduced himself. His name was Bruce Miller. He looked like a foreign man, but he spoke Chinese. He also introduced himself as Zhang Chen, and how did Bruce know he was Chinese? Bruce said that he had a good eye for judging people. It was because he understood how to eat. Zhang Chen also watched Bruce carefully. One look, and he could tell that this guy had a pretty good body shape and a gun. Bruce asked him not to worry. Bruce just felt a sense of camaraderie in the same profession. Zhang Chen didn't understand why Bruce felt their professions were the same. He asked it was obvious. Bruce asked if he didn't realize the security guard at the door had been watching him all this time. Zhang Chen said why. He was just a man on vacation. He immediately greeted the security guard at the door. If Bruce wasn't responsible for Nave's safety, he would never have come here. And when he entered the hall, the first thing he noticed was this eyesore. Laughing, Bruce said it was probably for the best. Actually, Bruce thought that if he fought a dangerous man like him in close combat, Bruce might lose. Bruce also said to Zhang Chen that he hoped he would enjoy his meal. But Zhang Chen looked very busy choosing the food that was there. Bruce asked all his troops to retreat, because he himself would watch over him. Zhang Chen saw Bruce coming back to him. He thought Bruce went to meet his subordinates. Bruce thought about it carefully and decided Zhang Chen was still interesting to talk to. In Mandarin, he could tell they clicked. Bruce felt that Zhang Chen was a dangerous character, and he should keep an eye on him. Zhang Chen already knew that Bruce was watching him, because Bruce was afraid he would do something. He called this man dishonest at all. Bruce tries to approach him and wants to try to tell him. When Bruce was a teenager who had just enlisted, Zhang Chen interrupted Bruce because he hadn't agreed for Bruce to tell him. The other guests were seen partying. But Bruce continued his story. At that time in Ukraine, 
when they were escorting high-ranking government military officials to the front lines and they were ambushed on the way. Jiang Chen didn't seem to notice him and was busy looking for food. Bruce thought it was a Russian, with strong firepower. In the end, they hollowed out the inside of a large building. Until government army tanks came to eliminate the threat, Bruce wanted to know something about Zhang Chen. Because he couldn't afford to live in a beachfront villa that cost more than $1,000 a day in his salary. Bruce seemed to want to know the business Jiang Chen was running. Then Jiang Chen said he made money to enjoy spending it. Or should he save up to buy his coffin? Bruce apologized that he had assumed. If it was uncomfortable for him to reveal the nature of his business, then it was fine. Jiang Chen also felt that there was nothing inconvenient about it. He also said that his business was related to gold. Bruce asked if his business was in South Africa. That was a good location. Jiang Chen said the location was not in South Africa, but in Asia. Bruce added that in his experience, Asia was not a good place, even for his business. Laughing Jiang Chen said there was business at the border and they often used gold to make settlements. It turned out that this old man had so many questions for him. Bruce was silent, then invited Jiang Chen to drink together. Jiang Chen ate very much, and he enjoyed all the food until his stomach was full. He thought about what was blowing in his face and even gave Jiang Chen a business card. Why did Jiang Chen have to contact him? He immediately put Bruce's business card in his pocket because it was not allowed to litter. Suddenly, a beautiful woman tapped him on the shoulder. She asked if Jiang Chen was alone. She hadn't seen a good-looking man in a while. Jiang Chen then asked the woman if there was anything he could do for her. The woman needed a man who could accompany her to the beach. Coincidentally, her beachfront villa also needed a female companion. The woman asked Jiang Chen to take her, and she wanted to see the large villa. They introduced themselves to each other. It turned out that the woman was Li Yao, she was an artist. The next day, saw Li Yao, still sleeping. Jiang Chen was looking at the scenery on the balcony of his villa. He was looking at the information on his EP. Three of his attributes had increased by one or more points. It seemed like the efficacy of the genetic medicine had completely disappeared. If he wanted to improve his physical abilities, he could only do so through physical training or even a high-level drug. He didn't even know how Sun Jiu and Yao Yao were doing. Jiang Chen picked up a bottle of wine. He thought wine should be drunk this morning. He also wanted to enjoy what was in front of him. He also drank wine while relaxing on the balcony of his villa. Furthermore, is there anything he hasn't fulfilled? When she woke up, Li went straight to Jiang Chen who was relaxing on the balcony. She told him that drinking wine in the morning was not good for the stomach. Jiang Chen immediately pulls Liu aside and asks her to enjoy the view with him. Liu asked if he saw her or the view. Jiang Chen replied that he saw both, and both are very beautiful. There was something that Jiang Chen didn't understand. Liu is very beautiful and very smart, but why isn't she successful yet? According to Liu, sometimes being beautiful is a crime. Laughing, Jiang Chen said Liu really understood how to give compliments, but Liu hates it. They return to the room, where Liu is taking a selfie on the bed and Jiang Chen is changing his clothes. She asks Liu what he's doing, and he says he's posting his picture. This luxurious beachfront villa, she posted it to brag to her boyfriend. She's a fan of accidentally realizing there are men living here too, she'll be caught in a scandal. But Liu always thought getting caught in the scandal was great. There are press conferences and other rumors. Wouldn't Liu become famous? But that's just what she thought. It's better to enjoy how beautiful life is now. Li went back to relax on the balcony. Jiang Chen also felt like he was being used. Liu asks Jiang Chen to apply sunscreen on her because she wants to sunbathe. Jiang Chen looks annoyed. Why would she ask that when she's already in nice clothes? Then Jiang Chen hurriedly changes clothes and approaches Liu to relax with her. While relaxing, the bell at his villa rang. When Jiang Chen looked using the pad to see the CCTV, it turned out to be Bruce. Bruce wanted to chat with Jiang Chen. Could he have forgotten her overnight? Jiang Chen also said that he couldn't have just forgotten her and immediately opened the door for him. Liu asked if the man was his friend. Jiang Chen replied that he was a friend in a business relationship. Liu offers to walk him out, but Jiang Chen refuses. Jiang Chen asked him to go back to his room and bring his things here. He won't have another chance to bring them. Liu finally went to get her things and she would leave them to talk. They chatted in a room. Isn't Bruce the head of the security team for the Saudi prince? How did he have time to come see Zhang Chen? 
Bruce's previous employer seemed to have heard about what they were talking about last night. He was very interested in Zhang Chen and hoped to introduce Zhang Chen to him. Zhang felt like Bruce still wanted to rent him, but he's not interested in wielding an assault rifle in a war zone like Bruce. She also said that she didn't plan on letting this vacation go to waste. Bruce said it seemed like Zhang Chen was mistaken. Mr. Robert Smith is a known middleman. Whether it's crude oil or gold, he handles it all. He was his bodyguard back in Iron, and he's not a bad guy. Zhang Chen was interested and wanted to meet Mr. Robert, because he thought it seemed like they could work together on gold. Ten minutes later, Zhang Chen came to Mr. Robert's room. When he entered, Mr. Robert greeted him and welcomed him, a mysterious friend from the East. Zhang Chen also introduced himself to Mr. Robert, and he already knew about Mr. Robert from Bruce. He wondered why so many foreigners were fluent in Chinese. Laughing, Mr. Robert said his friend's friend was his friend. Mr. Robert told him to sit down, and Zhang Chen praised Mr. Robert for his amazing Chinese. He said it was natural, because he liked Eastern countries. There are business opportunities everywhere. Then Mr. Robert introduced his bodyguard, Nick Kaczynski. Bruce was a nice guy, but sometimes he and the FBI could get a little too close, so he found a different partner. Zhang Chen asked if the work he did was very dangerous. He heard from Bruce that Mr. Robert was known as a crude oil and gold broker. Besides securing crude oil and gold, from time to time, he had to assist his employer in obtaining firearms and other things like that. Once tried in this regard, it was difficult to avoid someone who intended to harm him. China has very strict gun laws, so it's actually a vacation paradise. It was a pity that the good time often passed quickly. For example, he had to take a plane to South Africa three times. Was she sure she had enough time? Mr. Robert said not to worry. He was very interested in the business that Zhang Chen was doing, and he offered to help Zhang Chen see if there were any areas he could help him with. Mr. Robert asked her not to misunderstand. He just happened to overhear her conversation with Bruce at the banquet. He had always been very interested in business in the Far East, but they were all still fumbling around in the early stages. His intuition told him there was a way for them to work together. Zhang Chen wanted Mr. Robert to set an example for him. Mr. Robert said that Zhang Chen's business dealings must be conducted in gold. But to his knowledge, China has strict laws. Selling large amounts of gold will definitely attract government attention. Zhang Chen also said it seemed like Mr. Robert understood a lot about China. He also asked if it was okay to sell gold in America. There isn't a problem either, but they are talking about the law. Talking about evidence, Mr. Robert has a team of experts in dealing with such matters. In fact, now, he has entered into a bit of a conflict with the Customs Department, but he still hasn't been caught. With regards to how he is handling this, let him give an example. He is incorporated in the framework of a Saudi company. If he had some crude oil from Iran, according to the petroleum law, this is illegal. But if he circulates this oil from the framework of the company in Saudi, although a certain amount of this crude oil will appear in the global market, it is sold legally. When Mr. Robert put it like that, it was really possible for them to work together. Mr. Robert was an honest businessman. No matter how big the amount was, he could accept it. As long as the gold can pass a program of the South African mining company, it can legally enter the global market. Of course, Jiang Chen doesn't need to worry about the details. He just needs to sell the gold to him. And he only takes a 9% commission fee. Jiang Chen thought for a moment. The 9% commission fee might be a little high. But this kind of business was not risk-free. Securing capital to buy gold meant he would need to take out a personal loan. He was afraid that the interest would not be small. Jiang Chen would accept the offer from Mr. Robert, but he had one condition. Mr. Robert was a little panicked. He wondered what condition Jiang Chen would put forward if he could fulfill it. Jiang Chen can guarantee the quality is pure gold. That's what he used to call 24K gold. But Mr. Robert needs to take care of the transportation, he will only bring the gold into his country. Also, he would accept payment in U.S. dollars on the spot. When it leaves his hands, he takes no further responsibility for the gold. Mr. Robert had no problem with the conditions that Robert asked for. And finally, they agreed to work together. Mr. Robert gave his business card. If John Chen had prepared the goods, he could contact Mr. Robert for the time and place. It was also better for John Chen to set up a Swiss bank, it would make things easier. Of course, he hoped his business would go smoothly. Zhang Chen then left the room. Mr. Robert wanted Zhang Chen to tell him how much gold he would prepare, because he needed to prepare his capital. But Zhang Chen asked Mr. Robert not to rush. 
he would contact him in mid-July. As for how much gold, it should be several tons. Mr. Robert was very surprised to hear Zhang Chen's words. Several tons? So with 9% commission fee, 3 tons means 10 million US dollars of revenue. It's like making money in your sleep. Mr. Robert was both excited and scared, even though he would become rich if this cooperation succeeded. He asked Nick if this friend from the East could be trusted. Nick gave his opinion and apologized because he really didn't understand. But that man was a dangerous man. Does he know Kung Fu? Mr. Robert, while trying to practice his Kung Fu moves. But Nick saw Mr. Robert as a strange man. He might be a businessman, but he might not be weak. Nick's instinct told him he was no match in a gunfight. But in a close combat, he had a 50 to 50 chance of winning. All right, we're in Asia. How about we go to Egypt next? Zhang Chen felt very happy because he had gotten a very extraordinary cooperation. He found a mattress made of roses. He could sell several tons of gold in one fell swoop. To think for a moment, then he was worried. The original plan was to divide the gold and sell it little by little in the gold shop. Although it would be less effective and easy to attract unwanted attention, it was definitely the safest option. Each pile of gold was about a billion gold, then he had to stop as soon as possible but it seemed that now he didn't have to be so careful. If his foreign friend was willing to solve the problem of entering the market, everything would be fine. He just needed a solid bank account, and those billions of emo would go into his wallet. How difficult is it to be able to transport gold? A ton is only 0.05 cubic meters. He can't take out more than the amount. Xin Liu is waiting for Zhang Chen. He feels annoyed that Zhang Chen is taking so long. Liu is already starving. Then Zhang Chen directly invited Liu to go out to eat. Liu wanted to eat at the Ice Sea Court restaurant, so Zhang Chen took her there. It turned out that there were very cute penguins in the restaurant, but the penguins were not as cute as Liu. He said the scenery was even more beautiful at night. It looked really good during the day too. Liu feels that Zhang Chen looks very happy today. Zhang Chen got a good deal. Liu was already confident. He thought it was because of him. Zhang Chen also asked Liu to guess how many business projects he would do. Millions of US dollars. But no matter how big the deal was, not a single Yusin had anything to do with it. A hundred thousand? That's just a fraction of the price. In fact, he didn't even know how much it was, probably at least a billion. Liu immediately coughed and choked upon hearing Zhang Chen say billion. He never thought Zhang Chen had that. Zhang Chen said it was impossible, as he remembered last night he had it in Liu. They also vacationed together for five days. They did a lot during this five-day vacation. Chicken Power was very exhausted. If this vacation continues longer, it looks like Chicken Power might die. After the vacation, Zhang Chen returned to Shanghai City. He was given a cup of coffee by the flight attendant. He thinks this vacation wasn't too bad. He just didn't know if he would be able to see her again. There is a pile of documents on the table. Che looks very upset that Zhang Chen doesn't pick up all her calls. Zhang Chen tries to apologize to Xia and promises to bring her next time if he is going on vacation there again and the scenery there is really great. But Xia still looked very upset with him and just kept quiet. This was her company, and the owner had to show his face no matter what. Xia asked Zhang Chen to come with the Industry and Trade Bureau this afternoon. She had prepared the files. They will all be here, welcome them carefully. Zhang Chen also thanked Xia for her hard work. He would go with her this afternoon and asked her not to talk about work for now and asked her to order whatever she wanted. Then Xia took the menu book and looked through the menu. It seemed like there were so many things she wanted to eat. But Zhang Chen wasn't even a little bit bothered. He asked Xia not to worry about him, he was just worried that she didn't have enough to eat. Finally, Xia and Zhang Chen had ordered the food they wanted to eat. But Xia looked like she was in a mood. Zhang Chen asked Xia what was wrong, was there something bothering her? Xia thought about their company's project. Didn't they say that every young company has great potential for growth? That's only for competitive companies with core competencies. Does Jiang Chen understand new technology? He probably doesn't even remember advanced math. Who remembers such nonsense after graduation? But he's not a good representation of those who can't. Jiang Chen asked Xia not to worry about the innovation side. He could make her understand that, to begin with, his company would enter the game development field and then use that as a stepping stone, entering the mobile phone market. But she had asked him to stop talking. Mobile phone games, online games, or PC games? Thinking about the market now, 
She has suggested they focus on mobile phone games. For the mobile market, it was a good idea, but setting both feet on the ground was the key to the company's development. Jane Chen also understood what she wanted. They would do it one after another. Next, he would trouble Xia's manager to be more attentive. After all, Xia held 10% of the shares. Xia looked incredulous because she got the company's shares, and when did she get the shares? Jiang Chen said just now when he decided. Their food had arrived and what Xia ordered was golden fried fish drumsticks. Xia looked confused even though the company had not yet begun to organize properly but Jiang Chen was already talking to her about shares. Jiang Chen immediately ate with gusto and asked Xia to eat too, because the food was so good. Xia really didn't understand whose company this was. After having dinner with Xia and discussing about the company, Jiang Chen finally went home. He thought the endurance of the person with the surname Xia was amazing, going back and forth between the trade industry and tax bureaus. His body couldn't last much longer. Speaking of work here, enough has been done. He immediately picked up his cell phone and then he needed to get ready to leave, ordering the food that had to be prepared to be taken to the post-apocalypse world. He had been back for a very long time, he had to go there to see the situation. Zhang Chen also remembered that he had to buy two suits of women's clothing for Sun Jiao and Yao Yao. In the leading city of the post-apocalypse world, there were two ships and several troops, led by Captain Time Lang Wang Shi Wu. They are on patrol and the team has activated light detection. They began working to detect life using helicopters, and the target was verified. The life sign matched, it was inside the building, T1 requested permission to attack. Captain Wang asked them to be ready, and he wanted to know what was hiding inside the building. Then Captain Wang gave information to the headquarters. If the Black Rider team was on top of the target, the current situation was unknown and requested artillery support. The command center at the headquarters received Captain Wang's message and will send help there. But there was a ship there, and the leader of the ship requested to prepare for launch. Black Rider team, fire will arrive in 60 seconds. Please raise the altitude. The ammunition was loaded, the target was 310,203 meters straight ahead, and the loading was complete. Then the weapon immediately fired towards the target. Captain Wang was seen counting down. Then the shot hit the target on the building. It instantly destroyed such a large building. This destructive power is not too bad. Captain Wang immediately confirmed the target to the headquarters. But suddenly Captain Wang's plane was shot from below. The command center at headquarters requested confirmation of the state of Team 2. It turned out that they were about to crash due to the gunfire and call for help. It turned out that they were hit by an EMP. The aircraft controls did not respond. Captain Wang asked to maintain the plane's altitude and prepare to jump out. When their plane exploded, they finally jumped. Captain Wang asked his troops to focus on the goal and they immediately used jetpacks to land. Finally, Captain Wang and his troops managed to land safely. It turned out that this thing shot the EMP and Captain Wang asked all his troops to enter. They hit the jackpot this time. When checked using the equipment they have, the results are Crystal Energy Reader 90,141, and this is fine. They would figure out how to get it when everyone gathered. One of Captain Wang's troops had one question for him. Isn't it true that the higher the crystal energy, the more dangerous the creature it is? Why did a new member seem to be assigned to this mission? If he meant this creature, it was true that those with an index of over 300 were called extreme mutants. But when it reaches a certain point, they are not dangerous anymore. To give an example, a person who weighs 50 kilograms can't beat a person who weighs 100 kilograms. But he doesn't even need to lift a finger against a 200 kilogram fat person, they even have problems moving. That's why anything over 90,000 like this, they are all considered disabled. Mutation favors the continued development of life energy, in part due to the influence of the radiation factor. The power of being fat also came with the damage caused by being fat. The previous EMP, it could cause a temporary electronic short circuit, but it was probably a one-time thing. One of the troops said that something was wrong. Normally, these extreme life forms would lure scavengers, but there wasn't even a mutant rat in sight. Canton Wang also suspected something. When looking at the extreme creature, it turned out that the creature was giving off light, like it was about to shoot something. But there was nothing in the sky that the creature would shoot. Captain Wang immediately ordered all his troops to shoot the creature. He charged the day it would blow itself up. If it worked, they would die on the spot. 
they relate. Finally, the creature blew itself up, and the explosion was so extraordinarily powerful that Captain Wang and all his troops died. The command center at headquarters informed them that the Black Rider was dead. Crystal energy readers to go up. The target has been divided. They found as many as twelve parts of the life form. All members are preparing to depart, although their elite troops can be replaced, but they have 220,000 energy crystals worth of equipment on them. What a loss. Finally, Jiang Chen returned to the post-apocalypse world. This place hasn't changed a bit. It's still as chaotic as ever. It seemed like he had almost gotten used to the air here. But it seemed like he really couldn't bring other living things with him. These walls, this reinforcement, and this courtyard. Jiang Chen was amazed at the changes to his home in the post-apocalypse world. Is this the same place he left a month ago? Sun Jiao was seen running. It turned out that he ran to Jiang Chen and hugged him immediately. Sun Zhao looks very happy because finally Jiang Chen is back. Jiang Chen misses Sun Zhao like crazy. Sun Zhao is very happy with his answer. Then Sun Zhao took him around and wanted to show him his handiwork. Sun Zhao replaced all the statues and fountains with more fortifications. He built watchtowers, put up wire fences and installed channels, and there were also walls, kitchens and bedrooms. Jiang Chen looked puzzled by Sun Zhao's handiwork. It couldn't be called a mansion, but rather a fortress. But Sun Zhou thought it would be much safer if it was like this. It was basically unprotected before. He just reinforced it a little. Jiang Chen thought that if they didn't reinforce this place, no one would notice. But Sun Zhou felt this was their home. They couldn't keep acting like no one lived here. Survivors happened to pass by and try to check it out. Then word would spread. Jiang Chen understood that Sun Zhou had done the right thing, and he thanked him. Then Jiang Chen looked for Yao Yao. Where is she now? The little boy must have missed Jiang Chen like crazy. He shut himself in his room to do some complicated things. Sun Zhou asked Jiang Chen to take a look. It turns out that Yao Yao is sleeping in her room. The room looks quite messy, and there are several thick notebooks that seem to be the result of Yao Yao's work. Jiang Chen also entered her room and called Yao Yao. It turned out that there was a lot of stuff there, and he didn't know what it was. He also saw a notebook on the table. Out of curiosity, he wanted to see the contents of the notebook. It turned out that when he tried to read it, he didn't understand it at all. It looks like Yao Yao is still asleep. She fell asleep from reading until late last night. Suddenly, Yao Yao wakes up, and it looks like she's delirious. She asks Jiang Chen not to leave because she's been working very hard. Then Yao Yao lies down and goes back to sleep. Jiang Chen looks happy to see Yao Yao's progress. It turned out that she had worked very hard. Jiang Chen thought for a moment, what was that boy working so hard for? And those books? Ian Sun Zhou must have caused a ruckus. They went to find books in a place filled with zombies. Should he explain the situation to them? It seemed like a good time to set down the cards and start working when it was convenient. Jiang Chen just kept quiet when he saw Sun Zhou. It turned out that Sun Zhou was really strange. She was wearing a tight pink shirt with black tan leggings carrying a leash. What kind of outfit is that? Why did it feel so threatening? She even held the rope like she had seen this before. Sun Zhou asked Zhang Chen to come down and not just stay there. Why did Sun Zhou change clothes? Those black socks aren't bad, they really suit her. Is there anything else Zhang Chen would like to add? Zhang Chen asked Sun Zhou for time to think. If he didn't bring it, he would forget completely. Jiang Chen asked Sun Zhou to have a family meeting. There was something Jiang Chen wanted to say to Sun Zhou. But Sun Zhou instead undressed Jiang Chen, pushed him onto a chair and tied him up with rope. He had done something absurd. Sun Zhou asked for his opinion. He had studied about this in the library. Is there anything that this Jiang Chen has to say? But Jiang Chen asked her not to study anything strange. It's not like Sun Zhou kissed him before you went into the house. It's up to him how he wants to handle it. Sun Zhao felt like Zhang Chen was cheating on her. He was so scared that he would do anything as long as it made her happy. Sun Zhao approached Zhang Chen, she would let him see her again. How extraordinary Sun Zhao was. But the unexpected happened, they had forgotten something. That there was one other person in the house. Sun Zhao said that this unknown intruder was already fully exposed by him. The rest is up to Yao Diao, keep an eye on him, don't let him escape. Then Sun Jiao quickly left the place, leaving behind Zhang Chen and Yao Yao. And Zhang Chen cried out to be untied. Zhang Chen called Yao Yao and said that she was home. Yao Yao looks very happy to see Zhang Chen back home. 
She wanted to help untie the knot, but she couldn't because it was so hard to open. After everything is settled, Jiang Chen takes them, both to a family meeting, because he has something to say. Does it have anything to do with Sun Zhou tying her up just now? But Jiang Chen ignored Yao Liu's question. He wanted to directly explain to them about something important. Jiang Chen was honest if he actually came from another world. But Sun Zhou already knew it. And Yao Liu doesn't seem to understand the meaning of Jiang Chen's words. Jiang Chen tried to give a demonstration. He used his power in front of Sun Zhou and Yao Liu. Sun Zhao and Yao Yao were shocked to see the power that Jiang Chen possessed. Yao Yao thought that Jiang Chen was a god. Jiang Chen tried to explain to them about the power he had. It's like having a temporary storage area like a small refrigerator. But he can't see it, and only Jiang Chen can use it. And he deviates goods from other worlds in this refrigerator and also gold is very easy to exchange goods like this there. Yao Yao began to understand that Jiang Chen was actually from a peaceful pre-war world. Of course, they couldn't possibly end up like the pre-war situation. Yao Yao and Sun Zhao seemed very happy that Jiang Chen could bring so much food across the two worlds. He understood what they were thinking. He had tried it, but apart from himself, they all ended up like this when he brought them here together. Right, there were mutant bacteria everywhere. Only a human with biological resistance didn't become a zombie. If he brought back other living beings, the bacteria might spread here too. And Sun Zhou just focused on the food and asked him not to put the food back. Jiang Chen was silent, he had never thought about that. Before all he cared about was making money. This bracelet stops all life outside the user's body. If not, he and his world would probably. This time he had brought a lot of supplies to exchange for crystals. He had also bought some daily necessities to strengthen their villa. One biscuit could be exchanged for several crystals. They didn't need to go to 6th Street. The local survivor camp would do it. For the villa, if they could buy some heavy artillery, that would be great. He would make a list, but he didn't trust the survivor camp, and asked to go to 6th Street. Sun Zhao confirmed it, but Huigu's mercenaries were definitely waiting for them on 6th Street. He asked Sun Zhou not to worry, he would go alone. It wouldn't be so dangerous for him, and he wouldn't even need two minutes. Then she disappeared, only to return moments later. It turned out that crossing frequently really took work. Sum Zhao looked incredulous. Jiang Chen had just crossed and returned using his strength. So in this way he could go to 6th Street by himself. Then use the storage dimension so he could bring all the stuff back. But Sun Zhao wasn't so sure. He thought Sun Zhao needed to take care of the house. They didn't have enough people. And he could just buy some people this time. In a sarcastic tone Sun Zhao said like a few more beautiful women. What kind of person did Sun Zhao think he was? One person couldn't maintain a villa of this size by themselves. They also needed some experts. Yao Ya said she wanted to help and she could learn. She felt like Jiang Chen didn't need her anymore. Jiang Chen tries to talk sense into Yao Yao. Not only did he not want to make Yao Yao tired, he had already helped her a lot. Also, Yao Yao needs to remember to rest, not to trade every night. There's something she needs to pay attention to. On Yao Yao's part, she wasn't even allowed to think about releasing another slave's electronic necklace. Jiang Chen was already thinking about that. Before that he would use the peaceful time to think about the affairs of this world. After that he would do his best. Then Sun Zhao can relax, is the family meeting over? Not yet, because there was still one more thing to talk about. It was about Sun Zhou and what he needed to do. Jiang Chen asked her to tell him about it right now. Sun Zhao panicked because Jiang Chen still remembered about it. She's actually very satisfied with the life she has now, but since Jiang Chen asked, she'll tell him whatever she wants. This place is actually Sun Zhou's home. In the past, a group of criminals came to this place, and they found Sun Zhou. This little lady was separated from her family. That group of criminals seemed to have attacked a useless refugee shelter. The refugee group said that they were peaceful. Although they sell Sun Zhou to human traffickers, they're not even worth gas money. If they were useless, then feed them to the zombies. Their boss asked to move quickly, not to forget that trouble was coming. Sum Zhao thought he was going to die here. But someone was watching the group of criminals. The target was at 2 o'clock, and there was still a hostage. The person immediately shot the group of criminals. They immediately ran for cover, and they were looking for where the shot came from. Finally, they found the person on top of the southwest building. One of them was shot again. Their boss ordered them to shoot him. Then the entire group of criminals immediately shot at the building where the person was. 
It turned out that the person had moved and hid behind a wall close to the criminals. The man immediately attacked the criminals quickly. One of the thugs shot at him, but no one was hit, and the man was able to dodge his attack. Quickly, he beat the criminals. The frightened little son Joe took cover under the table and didn't want to die. After everything was safe, the person immediately asked little son Joe to get out of there. Then that person invited son Joe to go with him. Little son Joe saw that all the criminals had been defeated. They were just a group of human traffickers, that person had beaten them all. It turned out that the one who had saved little son Joe was a woman, and she came from Shelter 071. As far as he knew, Shelter 071 was a shelter designated for refugees. The outside world was nothing like that refugee shelter. The woman immediately gave little son Joe some bread. It seemed like she hadn't eaten in a while. Little son Joe took the bread and ate it and walked along with the woman who helped her. The woman was from the FLA, the army. Her job was to clear the desert. In order to survive, most of the work is killing people. Now little son Joe has food and water. What will he do next? She can only be silent and speechless. The woman felt that little son Joe was mute. Her refugee shelter was gone, the life she had was over. Nearby there was a new city block being built, and it was called Block 6. She could take him there. But little son Joe refused. He didn't want to go there. The woman thought that if the age of genetic disability was over, he couldn't be mute. So where did little son Joe want to go? If he had no destination, he wouldn't live long in this desert. It turned out that son Joe wanted to find his parents and his sister. The woman wanted to help him find his family. And she would teach son Joe many things to survive and find his family. Jane Chen was curious about the continuation of son Joe's story. After that, he slowly realized that his master had lied to him. His family wasn't in the desert. It would be strange if strangers didn't show up and attack him. And little by little, she began to understand. Even if he found his family, he might not be able to return to the life that prayer had before. So when his master taught him how to survive in the desert, how to become a soldier, the fact was that it was all extra. This was the truth he wanted to tell him. No matter what the master said, he was lucky. Looking back at how he spent his childhood in that refugee shelter, it was really lucky. But the master was really a strange person. He said his job was to kill people. But he always occupied himself with meaningless things. He was very mysterious, even until the day he suddenly disappeared. Some Jow still didn't understand what he was doing. Then Sun Jo tried to look for him. All the news he heard was that she was in battle and dead. After that, Sun Jiao started wandering alone. He went to many places. In the end, he could tell that both parents were dead. But he had a younger brother. No one told him if he was dead too. So he simply kept searching. She looked for where her father used to live before the shelter. And finally, after searching tirelessly, fruitlessly, and malnourished, Sun Jiao put on a suit of pre-war clothes that he found in the house. And as he waited to die, he collapsed from hunger. As he fell unconscious, a ghostly apparition appeared. And it turned out that what he saw was Zhang Chen. Even though Zhang Chen had called out several times to see if anyone was in the house. In the end, didn't Zhang Chen get it cheaply? From now on, Zhang Chen will listen to news about his sister. Zhang Chen also asked Yo Yao if there was anything he could do for her. Yo Yao is already very happy. She already has a family by her side. Smiling, Zhang Chen understood what Yao Yao wanted. Zhang Chen also took something from his dimension safe. He wanted to show something to Yao Yao and wanted to ask for her help. He took out a cell phone, electronic goods, but all of Yao Yao's equipment was upstairs. Some Zhou asked them to go to Yo Yo's room and he'll clean up the supplies that Zhang Chen brought. They entered Yo Yo's room and she asked Zhang Chen to be careful with the wires in her room. Zhang Chen never expected that the place they were using was Sun Zhou's house. Although it looks like some kind of mad scientist lab now. Yo Yo asked Zhang Chen to show her the high technology of his world. Zhang Chen explains that this isn't high tech, it's just a cell phone game. Yo Yo just heard about the term cell phone game. Didn't Yo Yo live during the pre war period? Didn't they have video games before? Then Zhang Chen explained what a cell phone game was to Yao Yao. Yao Yao finally understood after hearing Zhang Chen's explanation. The pre war period had a few shooting games, but they all played them in gaming capsules. All mainstream games were designed with virtual reality engines. Lying down meant he could reduce fatigue, and while still playing the game. After a while, games weren't uploaded in communication tools anymore. It seems that it's not that they don't have games, but all the mobile phone games are old-fashioned like Shoba Wong. 
Jiang Chen thought what he should do. Give up on mobile phone games, connecting this directly to the VR system. That seemed impossible. Jiang Chen asked Yo Yao to research this phone to his heart's content. Yo Yo looked very happy. She began to examine the phone. She thought the processor was ancient, and there were still many questions about the phone that she wanted to know. It didn't seem that difficult. If you use D-plus coding, you should be able to fit all this into a very small space. Of course, game programming was one of the art things, music, gameplay, and so on. And Yo Yao has no experience in this field at all. I think Jiang Chen's expectations are too high. After all, not all programming experts are genius game designers. Although the hardware requirements are reduced, the core of it is still gameplay. Yo Yo also asked Jiang Chen to lead this matter to her. He promised to produce what she wanted in five days. Jiang Chen looked happy that it could be done so quickly. He thought it would take at least a few months. Starting from scratch was a little troublesome, but suddenly Yao Yao remembered that there was a public library nearby. The place where Sun Jiu brought back reference books like this. The library database had a lot of history source codes. The cell phone games from Jiang Chen's world were definitely here. Jiang Chen only needed to make another trip there to copy the relevant data. Then he could get the basic language code. Jiang Chen immediately picked up Yo Yao and said that she was really cute. Yo Yao was very happy to be praised by him. Jiang Chen also asked Yo Yao to work hard. Sun Zhou was busy tidying up their supplies, and there were a lot of them. Suddenly, Jiang Chen hugged her from behind and praised Sun Zhou's work. Sun Zhou was a little upset that Jiang Chen never came to help him. But he didn't know that Sun Zhou was this eager to move it to the basement. This was food, so it had to be stored as quickly as possible. Jiang Chen told her not to worry too much because she wouldn't starve. Sun Zhou brought more gold for him. It was piling up in the pool outside, and he had to go take a look. Jiang Chen felt there were many pleasant surprises today. But did someone forget what he did to her this afternoon? They also went into the room. Go ahead and yell. Even if Sun Jiu yelled until his voice was gone, no one would come and help him. Jiang Chen was seen aiming at the zombie and trying to kill it. But even his shots missed, and he looked quite upset. Jiang Chen had tried to aim for the head, but he only hit his chest. He tried again and aimed a little higher. Jiang Chen finally gets his aim right, and his shot hits the zombie in the head. Sun Zhou didn't think the shot was too bad. He asked Jiang Chen to continue practicing. Adjust the angle based on the distance. The shooting position keeps the hand steady. Brace it on the shoulder, watch the breathing. If the distance is close, don't use a drought or small items. Sun Zhou asked Jiang Chen to have some common sense. They were now doing live target practice. But if he really encountered a horde of zombies, one mistake could cost him his life. Jiang Chen thought he was currently enhancing his body. None of this would matter. It was getting dark and the zombies were already starting to activate. Sun Zhou asked to stop training because at night the zombies became more dangerous. It was better not to provoke them. The 120 bullets used dropped 70, killing 29. It was still acceptable and Jiang Chen had just graduated. Sending him to block 6 like this, even if he couldn't defeat them, he could still escape. Sun Zhou invited him to go inside because it was time for dinner. Jiang Chen was still wondering if he could really do this. The next day, Jiang Chen put all the items to be exchanged such as food, water, and weapons. Items that need to be used at any time can be put in his bag. Sun Zhou told him to move quickly and carefully. Yo Yao seems to have just woken up. When she sees Jiang Chen about to leave, she asks to wait for him. It seems she wants to get something for Jiang Chen. Jiang Chen is just going to walk to block 6. He'll be back before Yao Yao finds out. But Sun Zhou asks to wait for Yao Yao. He's been preparing for this for a long time. Yu Yao returned with a bag. Sleepily, she gave the bag to Zhang Chen. There is something Yu Yao designed in there. Like this small drone, it can connect to her DP and scan anything within a kilometer. It would be good if this could help her. Yu Yao seemed to be very tired, and she still needed to sleep a little longer. After giving her bag to Zhang Chen, Yu Yao went back to sleep on the chair. This child isn't afraid of catching a cold, so Zhang Chen gets a blanket and puts it on her. Sun Zhou asked Jiang Chen to leave soon. Finally, Jiang Chen went to block 6. He finally arrived at an empty building. He never thought it would be this far. It took 5 hours. Jiang Chen was seen monitoring his surroundings. He also looked at the map using a tool. This road seems safe for now. 
He seemed to be entering his city and at the gate was guarded by security officers in the city to check everyone who entered, and they are asked to prepare their EP. Zhang Chen also showed his EP. After checking it turned out that he was clean and was allowed to enter the city. He entered smoothly. Next he was looking for someone who could rent him a container. He finally found the person and wanted to rent a container from him. The seller asked him to fill out a form for the time and size of the container. He also asked Zhang Chen to prepare the EP. Once it was done, he would bring it there. When Zhang Chen got the goods, he paid. Zhang Chen looked annoyed because this person gave very bad service. After everything was done, the salesman asked Jiang Chen to follow him. They finally arrived at the container he was going to rent. General cargo, one key, and a deposit of three crystals. After the deposit was received, the salesman left. After that, there was no more contact with him. Don't lose the key and check the EP for the number. Jiang Chen checked around to make sure no one was following him. Once everything was secure, then he entered the container. First, he will put canned meat, clothes, biscuits, and others in the container. Once done, the container is locked back tightly. Next is the inner circle. First, he needs to sell the goods he has on hand. Then he can hire some extra people. Some Joe said not to try to get convicts or people with no labor value. He would need to go to the inner circle and find people with a clean record and long-term benefits. While walking, Jiang Chen saw an object he had never seen before. It seemed to be a weapon from within the city. If he could cut some parts off this machine, it would be great. Someone approached Jiang Chen and asked if he was trying to get into the inner city. Then that person asked for an EP and a crystal for the entrance fee, and he couldn't bring any weapons into the city. Block 6 mercenaries would be his security. The payment was received and Jiang Chen was let inside. According to Jiang Chen, this city was completely different. First, he had to find a hotel with high standards. He walked straight into the hotel and was greeted by a bellboy. He asked for the best room in the hotel, he would use the prepaid system to stay for a week. The maid wanted to make sure, Jane Chen wanted to stay in a premium suite for seven days, and the amount he had to pay was 70 crystals. Jiang Chen immediately paid the hotel room fee and gave 70 crystals to the waiter. There was a man sitting in a room. He was looking at Jiang Chen's personal data. The man is interested in Zhang Chen because he produces food. It turns out that the man is a boss and owns a company. A woman who was his secretary in the room suggested that the man meet with Zhang Chen. But the boss refused. He said there was no need to rush, just wait and watch. The woman wanted to make sure her boss's lunch today was chicken curry. The woman went to get her boss's lunch. After everything was ready, the woman returned to the room with her boss's lunch. She said that today was her last day with chicken curry. The woman immediately served the food. The boss immediately ate the food that had been prepared for him. The woman could only watch her boss eat. She was curious about the taste of the food and wanted to try it. The boss finished eating and he had just tasted such delicious food that was full of flavor even though it only came from such a small can. The outer circle collected 20 of these a few days ago. Although the unit price was 60 crystals, everyone was fighting for this, whereas he depended on his position to fight for one can. Embarrassingly, even if he divided it into three servings, it would last a day. He didn't even know the taste of the meat flavor of the boss to Ding's canned beef stew. The boss went back to look at Zhang Chen's personal data. The boss felt that Zhang Chen looked very familiar. He had seen her somewhere before, but he didn't know where. There were many tall buildings in the city block 6. Zhang Chen was inside a high-tech capsule. After finishing, he came out of the capsule. It turned out that he was using a nutrition capsule and the capsule has a massage function. Something like this jelly is really amazing. Technology is a good thing after all. Jiang Chen tried several other tools in the building. This time Jiang Chen was going to try playing table tennis against a public entertainment robot. With high confidence, it seemed like it was time for this robot to feel its prowess as China's national ball and the difficulty level of hell. It turned out that Jiang Chen lost badly by 11 to 0. He gave up and asked the robot to be more relaxed with him. He also tried another tool, this time he was holding a remote. It was a 7D dazzling stereo HD simulation system. He tried pressing the remote button and hoped it wouldn't be like that roadside imposter. It just looked like the black and white TV remote back at his old house. Suddenly Jiang Chen appeared in a city. He tried to look around and was confused as to why he was in that place. Jiang Chen looks amazed at this technology. He thinks this tool really brings it all out. It looks like the real thing. 
He tries to see the Industrial Revolution in World War II. It all seems so real, it's like he's there. The 7D movie and the health capsule were also incredible. He needs to figure out a way to take each of them home with him. There's also this robot butler, not selling it to most of Taku would be a travesty. But there is one thing that is not right. Yesterday he chose the most premium hotel to catch some fish, but today is almost over. Why hasn't anything happened yet? Didn't these guys leave any notes from the last shipment of cans? That's not right. Don't say if he should start the contract first. But suddenly the bell rang. Jiang Chen rushed to open the door as if the person he was waiting for had come. It's true that the one who came was the boss who had tried his canned food. He came with his secretary and two bodyguards. Jiang Chen also asked who the man who came to him was. The man introduced himself, he was Zhao Chen Wu, and his secretary Su Lei. Then Jiang Chen invited them to sit down. Mr. Zhao sat down, and she apologized to him for troubling her. Mr. Zhao looked very surprised to see a bag of oranges brought by the female robot. He briefly recalled how long it had been since he last saw real fruit. Su Lei also looked eager to try the orange fruit, even if it was just one bite. Jiang Chen also observed the two of them. They not care. Or are they just pretending and hiding their interests in the orange? He thought this was really interesting. Jiang Chen asks the female robot to leave and it seems Mr. Zhao has already looked at Jiang Chen's personal data. When Jiang Chen recorded such detailed information, wasn't he hoping someone would come to see him? Usually hotel registration only requires a gene ID. But if he doesn't specify the food company, I'm afraid he'll have to wait until next year. The female robot came back with some fruit that Jiang Chen had prepared. She invited Mr. Zhou to try the fruit she had brought. It was canned fruit, her company's specialty. Since she had a soft spot for oranges, she had just decided to bring some canned oranges. She hoped they wouldn't be reluctant to eat them. Mr. Zhao was surprised that he brought oranges especially for them to try. Su Lei looked very eager to try the oranges. Mr. Zhou's hands were shaking uncontrollably because it was the first time he could try real fruit. Then he ate the oranges. He looked very happy eating the orange. He had never eaten such a good orange in this post-apocalypse world. Su Lei also enjoyed eating the orange and Jiang Chen was relieved to see both of their reactions. Jiang Chen asks how the fruit he brought tastes. Mr. Zhao really enjoyed the citrus fruit, unfortunately, although Block 6 can also produce some fruit, the quantity is very limited.